everybody, it's your girl Nina. So, so I am going to be changing the thermostat today on my Honda Civic. It's a sedan 2009. So I'm just going to walk you through the process to the best of my ability and how I do it. I am powerful. You can too be to show you a few of the things that we're, we need to use in order to get this done uh, we got our 50 50 mix um, mixture um, of antifreeze and coolant and water um, prairie stone is one of the better brands to purchase to do this and as you can see this is especially made for hondas and acuras we got our um, lift here funnel our um, drain pan or oil pan we also have a socket with an extension. Needle, is it a 10 inch extension? <clears throat> Needle nose plier. And we may be using this, but I'll let you know as we go along if it's necessary. And of course, our thermostat, which is in the bag, pre sealed. And our, our hand wipes and so forth for spills and cleanups. So let's get started on this. And here we are. Oh, wait, let me show you what the thermostat looks like with the washer or, yeah, it's not really a washer, it's a sealant. Okay, and this is what the thermostat looks like. So let's get under this hood. We're just going to find a clip. Oh, where's my clip? Several minutes later. Why not? So, this needs uh, a power wash. So, uh, under the, the hood of your vehicle, you always have this stand. There's two positions that you could use, depending on how high you want this open. There's this one here, and secondly, this one, second position. But we're going to use, ah, let's leave it all the way up so you can fully, fully see what's going on here. All right, so let's get started. I should be putting on my gloves, which I'm going to do now because I don't want to ruin these nails. So we're going to get our nails on. My um, gloves on, sorry. Okay, next step. So once you get the prop your vehicle up on the jack, uh, the next thing is for us to get underneath the car. Okay, so here we are. We're just going to reach for this here and loosen this. Make sure you have your oil pan or container to um, catch the fluid that's going to be coming out of this, which is now flowing out. Oops. I was trying to avoid getting it onto my driveway. Fluids are releasing from uh, the rod right now. So we're going to use our needle holes pliers um, to release this radiator hose. Um, it's not necessary to do that, but for the sake of being able to see clearly what we're doing, because um, we won't be able to see exactly where we're going to be placing the thermostat unless we remove this. So we're just going to grab this and apply it there and I'll see if I have enough strength to do this. I may need assistance. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, it's coming. Nope, it's not. Let me turn it the other way. Okay, finally got it clipped and locked and we're going to pull it further down onto the hose and then release. Alright, so now we're able to Okay. All right, so we're gonna go in here and as you can see, uh, this is a thermostat housing. There's three bolts here that we need to remove. It might give me a warm time, but this is a 
the housing and the thermostat actually is underneath this housing. So we're gonna use our socket with the extension and uh, apply, put the apply like I'm doing this right here. And, whoops. That thing, I don't want that to. <laughs> As you guys can tell, this is not my profession. <laughs> But Lord. I'm going the right direction. <laughs> Where, how come I feel tight? Okay, so we finally got it loosened, so we're just gonna oh, we release the yeah. All right, this is the extension part. Now we're just gonna take each one of these bolts out manually. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Did I rip my glue? All right, we're gonna put it up here for safety. And go back and take the other two bolts off. Okay, guys, I thought there was only three bolts to this, but there's actually four. So I'm just working on taking out the last one. This is why it was giving me a struggle because it was still bolted in. So I got it out. So last screw. And it's up here. So now let's see what's going on here. All right. And as you can see, ooh, this is leaking out. Let me move this pan. Uh, as a result of taking that out, of course, we're going to get um, rad fluid excess that was there. I'm just going to see if I can get this released. Hold on. Put the housing, the housing off. But if you notice, there's excess fluid in um, the housing unit. So what we're going to do is make sure that we dry that up. You know? You don't want anything interfering with what we're doing, so that's why we're going to be using these towels, these shop back towels, to absorb as much of this as possible. All right, let's put that there. You may need to just get in there and absorb as much as you can. Actually, this can take some more. I'm going to need some more towels, actually. No? Okay, maybe not. Let's see how it goes. All right. This is looking pretty good. Now, 
We need to pay special attention to how this thermostat was set inside of the housing unit because we're going to want to replace it exactly how it's set. Uh, it's so important to make sure that it goes back in the same position when you, I mean, when you put the new one in. So we have some nodules here that are facing upwards and a little oh, peg. What's that? Hmm. All right, so let's try and remove this. Is there anything else that we should be paint? So usually it's a little bit different here. The thermostat's usually stuck inside and then we use this little hook device to pry it out. But we're gonna do the opposite since it's stuck in this housing unit. So we're just gonna kind of peel. It's like a gasket and seal it and try to remove that. go all right so we got it out so remember the way this was positioned in there our weeping what is this a weeping hole uh was positioned i would say north upright with our two pegs to on each side of it so that's how we're going to replace it with the new thermostat so my gasket separated from the <laughs> thermostat. You know, it's funny, anytime you decide to do an outdoor thing, everybody comes out and starts either cutting their grass or sawing something. <laughs> All right, so we got that. So our thermostat is in place. We're now gonna uh, put the housing unit back on and put our screws back into place. So roll the thumb. Righty tighty, and if you want to unloose your screws, it's a uh, lefty loosey or something. Okay, so let's uh, go back on our hose. Make sure it's smug. Now we're gonna get our needle. needle. I was gonna say needle line. <laughs> Grab a soap on needle line. It's kind of awkward when you're trying to get it on camera. Feels good. All right, guys. That's part of the process done there. Our hose is back on. Thermostat's in place and our bolts are securely in. So, we need to get our... Oh, let me close the bottom there. Since we've drained out the fluid from underneath. See, our fluid's all drained out into our pan here. So, we're just going to tighten this back up because we're going to have to replace this fluid with a new fresh uh, fluid so our car will work nicely especially when winter comes with heat that's the reason why we're doing this because i wasn't having really uh good heat flow in the car all right so that's tightened up let me make sure it's real tight because i don't want nothing leaking all over the place yeah 
Okay, we tight. Okay guys, so the hard part has been done. We've accomplished that. Uh, we took the car off of the stands and lowered it with the jack. So now we're gonna actually replace the fluid. Uh, please note the old fluid that you take from the car, you can take it to your local recycling center. Don't dispose of it any and anywhere. It's a hazard. They'll recycle it, refine it, probably resell it, but do not throw it down your sewer make sure you send it to uh, take it to a recycling center so let's get started on this we're going to uh, take off our radiator cap and this is where we're going to use our funnel and i already started that process as you can tell all right funnels in rod and this is where we're going to pour this baby in which i should have probably started this process when they pour into our rod Oops. Okay. Until I'm not good at this. This is a process. Okay, so you're after filling your fluid into your rod, you're gonna start it just to release. <laughs> Just to release the uh, the air bubbles in there. So let's start this way. Sending you love, peace, and blessings. We'll be on the road traveling soon. Blessings.